Welcome to the Factality channel. When you think of the brand Honda, reliability instantly comes to mind. Honda boasts the highest number of victories in motorcycle racing titles and holds the title of the world's largest manufacturer of motorcycles and internal combustion engines. If you're a proud owner of a Honda motorcycle, this story aims to take you on a journey through the history of Honda motorcycles and introduce you to the fascinating personality of the company's creator. The history of Honda is intricately woven with the unique personality of its founder, Mr. Honda himself. He was not just an entrepreneur but a dreamer, an engineer, a risk-taker, and, some might say, a bit of a wild spirit. Let's delve deeper into his story. Born on November 17, 1906, in the Japanese village of Keio, near Hamamatsu, Mr. Honda grew up in a family of a blacksmith and a weaver. Despite facing early hardships, including the loss of siblings, his parents tried their best to provide for him. However, the demands of hard work left little time for focused parenting. Mr. Honda, a mediocre student who found traditional schooling dull, quickly gained a reputation as a truant. To conceal his academic struggles, he became adept at forging family seals and signatures in his diary. His interest in mechanics started early when he observed the growing popularity of bicycles in Japan. Assisting his father in the workshop, Mr. Honda developed skills in bicycle repair and maintenance. His inquisitive nature led him to explore local mills and internal combustion sawmills with his grandfather. The turning point came when, at the age of 11, Mr. Honda attended an air show featuring the renowned pilot Arthur Smith. Despite lacking funds for a ticket, he found a vantage point in a tree and marveled at the spectacle. His fascination with machines grew, and he began to notice cars on the roads, chasing them and immersing himself in the world of engines. In 1922, after graduating from high school, Mr. Honda enrolled in the Engineering Institute. However, financial difficulties halted his formal education. An opportunity arose when he discovered a job opening at a car service center in Tokyo. Determined to pursue his passion for mechanics, he walked 250 kilometers to secure the position. Initially relegated to menial tasks, Mr. Honda's break came during heavy snowfall, which increased the workload at the workshop. With full-time mechanics overwhelmed, the owner, Yuza Sakabara, allowed Mr. Honda to showcase his skills. His proficiency in repairing cars led to a promotion and a transition from servant to a professional mechanic. In 1928, Mr. Honda established his own branch of art shaka in Hamamatsu, focusing on improving automobile spare parts. He patented an invention to replace wooden wheel spokes with more durable metal ones. His commitment to innovation and racing continued, with his involvement in the development of racing cars, including a unique Ford engine with a tilted counterclockwise design for improved racing performance. This marks just the beginning of Mr. Honda's remarkable journey, and in the next part, we will delve further into his achievements and the evolution of Honda motorcycles. So, make yourself comfortable and stay tuned for more captivating insights into the history and personality behind the iconic Honda brand. They collided at a speed of 120 km per hour with another car, causing the vehicle to overturn three times. The mechanic driver managed to escape with a dislocated shoulder and numerous abrasions, but unfortunately, his younger brother suffered a broken spine. Despite this tragic incident, Honda, after being hospitalized in October of the same year, decided to participate in another race. This turned out to be his final race as a pilot. Contemplating his future in the automotive industry, Honda made a pivotal decision to manufacture piston rings. At that time, a piston ring cost more than the equivalent weight of silver. Immersing himself in the workshop, Honda took on the challenge of developing a piston ring. His determination led to a contract with Toyota, allowing only three out of 50 trial rings into operation. Before delving into this venture, Honda famously declared, I can build anything if I see it at least once. However, he soon realized that his eight years of school and workshop experience were insufficient. Honda enrolled at the Industrial Institute in Hamamatsu, attending lectures with initial enthusiasm, but his lack of commitment led to expulsion. Undeterred, Honda continued learning as an unregistered student for another year. After about two years, he successfully created a high-quality piston ring. Leaving RK for Takaiseki, he thrived in producing these rings. During the war, Honda honed his skills in automating production and invented an automatic milling machine for turning aircraft propellers. Post-war challenges, including American bombings and earthquakes, disrupted production, but Honda's resilience prevailed. He decided to sell his enterprise to Toyota for 450,000 yen, taking a creative break. 
During this hiatus, Honda ventured into various projects, such as extracting salt from sea water by electrolysis and attempting to create a loom, which proved expensive and unsuccessful. Observing the post-war transportation challenges, Honda recognized the potential of motorized bicycles. Inspired by a friend who attached a small kerosene motor to a bicycle, Honda saw an opportunity to enhance mobility. This marked the birth of Honda's motorcycle company in 1946. In 1948, he founded the Honda Motor Company, working with his younger brother and friends to adapt a motor from a radio station to a bicycle frame. Despite initial challenges and experiments with alternative fuels like turpentine, Honda persevered. In 1949, they produced the first Honda A-Type, featuring strict fuel restrictions in post-war Japan. However, Honda's innovative ideas led him to explore using turpentine as fuel, albeit with mixed results. Honda's journey continued with the development of the Dream Type D motorcycle, which became popular despite economic difficulties in Japan. With the competent management of finances and sales by Takeo Fujisawa, Honda Motor Company navigated a competitive market and emerged successfully. The outbreak of the Korean War further stimulated the Japanese economy, allowing Honda to expand production. Honda's four-stroke model, the E-Type, introduced in October, proved highly successful, setting production records in Japan. In 1951, Honda articulated the company's philosophy, emphasizing the joys of creativity, selling, and buying. This philosophy became a guiding principle for the company's future endeavors. In 1952, the company introduced another bestseller, the F-Type Auxiliary Bicycle Motor, also known as CABF. This motor boasted similar power to its predecessors but weighed only half as much. To promote this product, Fujisawa initiated the distribution of 50,000 letters to bicycle dealers in Japan, receiving an overwhelming 30,000 responses. The production commenced in October 1952, with Honda shipping 6,000 units of CABFA in the first month and 9,000 in December. The auxiliary engine was produced throughout 1953, selling in large quantities and becoming the first export product of the Honda company in 1952. In 1953, the company introduced the J-Type Cubic model, also known as Benley, meaning convenient. These three popular motorcycle models E-Type, F-Type, and J-Type significantly improved the company's financial position, expanded production capacity, increased staff, and solidified its presence in the local market. As the economic situation improved in Japan in 1954, Honda shifted its focus to the production of more substantial equipment. Despite Honda's preference for four-stroke engines, the company recognized the necessity of producing two-stroke engines at the early stages of its formation. In 1954, Honda dominated the Japanese market, establishing its products as renowned for high quality and affordability. In 1954, Honda's founder, Mr. Honda, and Kyoka Washimego embarked on a business trip to Europe, aiming to explore advanced equipment for the enterprise. During this trip, Honda decided to participate in the tourist trophy race on the Isle of Man, one of the most prestigious and dangerous motorcycle races globally. Recognizing the importance of racing victories for sales and popularity, Honda set ambitious goals. Upon returning to Japan, Honda declared his intention to participate in the tourist trophy race to his employees, expressing his childhood dream of becoming a world champion. Despite initial challenges and cultural differences, Honda was generally received warmly during their European tour. The company focused on studying German NSU motorcycles in the 125 and 250 cubic centimeters class, but allegations of copying were unfounded. In 1957, Italian motorcycle manufacturers withdrew from an agreement and Honda, seizing the opportunity, purchased one of the last moto racing motorcycles. While not extensively copying techniques, Honda drew inspiration from German and Italian engineering decisions. The company immersed itself in designing racing machines and tested them in local races, gaining experience for their debut at the Tourist Trophy race in 1959. During Honda's debut at the Tourist Trophy, the racing team faced challenges adapting to the island's hard road surface and tire behavior. Despite these obstacles, all four motorcycles completed the race without breakdowns, showcasing Honda's commitment to reliability. This success marked the beginning of Honda's reputation for producing reliable vehicles, spreading globally. As Honda continued its success with the Super Cub, a legendary motorcycle created under the vision of Takeo Fujisawa, the company made a significant impact on the global market. In the 1950s, Honda entered the US market, fulfilling the dream of becoming a dominant force in the world's richest market. 
The American Honda Motor Company's first sales office in California marked a milestone in Honda's global expansion. In the 1950s, only around 1% of the U.S. population rode motorcycles. This group consisted of regular individuals, police officers on duty, and occasionally, marginalized bikers who engaged in unconventional activities. The infamous Hollister Bike Rally in 1947, which led to a riot, fueled the formation of a stereotype in society. The 1953 film, The Wild One, further shaped the perception of bikers as outlaws, drunks, and drug addicts even if individuals were law-abiding citizens. Honda recognized this societal perception and cleverly leveraged it in their marketing strategy to penetrate the U.S. market. Honda's brilliant marketing move involved countering the negative stereotype associated with bikers. The slogan, You Meet the Nicest People on a Honda, was a stroke of genius. It emphasized the contrast between the popular image of bikers and the friendly, approachable persona Honda riders represented. Additionally, phrases like, if you need four wheels, how about a second Honda, played into the idea of Honda motorcycles as reliable, everyday transportation. This marketing approach proved highly successful and by 1959, Honda had begun its victorious march across America. The strategy also highlighted the changing landscape of motorcycling, presenting it as a practical and accessible mode of transportation rather than an emblem of rebellion. Harley-Davidson, realizing it was losing market share, attempted to respond, but Honda's momentum in America became unstoppable. By 2009, Honda had established its first production plant in Belgium, marking a significant milestone in its global expansion. Returning to motorsports, Honda made a notable debut in 1959 at the Isle of Man and by the 1960s, the racing team achieved commendable rankings. The secret to Honda's racing success lay in their motorcycle's ability to sustain high RPMs without breaking down, setting them apart from competitors. In 1964, Yamaha and Suzuki entered the scene, challenging Honda with two-stroke engines. However, Honda, led by its founder's preference for four-strokes, produced racing machines that outpaced the competition. Despite regulatory changes in MotoGP, Honda's innovations continued to set them apart. By 1959, Honda had become the largest motorcycle manufacturer globally, a position it still holds today. The company's focus was not just on achieving top sales but on conquering the world market. In the USA, Honda initially relied on flagship models with engine capacities of 250 and 305 cubic centimeters. The Super Cub, introduced in 1958, became a legendary motorcycle and significantly contributed to Honda's global success. In the early 1960s, Honda expanded its product line with the introduction of the C77 Superhawk, considered the first Japanese sports motorcycle. The motorcycle boasted a 305 cubic centimeters engine, producing 28 horsepower, and could reach speeds of 165 miles per hour. Honda's innovative and reliable motorcycles gained popularity in the USA, aided by strategic marketing and cultural influences. In the late 1960s, Honda faced challenges with the CB450, as American consumers were skeptical about the capabilities of a smaller motorcycle. However, Honda's persistent marketing efforts, including featuring the CB77 Superhawk in films, contributed to the brand's success. The turning point came in 1969 with the introduction of the CB750, known as the first superbike. It outperformed competitors, brought four-cylinder engines to the masses, and was the first production motorcycle to feature disc brakes. The CB750's success significantly impacted the British motorcycle industry, marking the decline of once-dominant brands. As Honda continued to innovate, assembling a development team in the early 1970s, they set out to create a new flagship motorcycle suitable for long-distance travel. The project, known as the A King of Kings, aimed to cater to the American market's preference for motorcycles used for extended journeys, setting the stage for Honda's continued success and influence in the motorcycle industry. Rima Yiri embarked on designing a motorcycle that offered a comfortable and imposing seating position for luggage, coupled with an elastic traction engine. By 1972, the first prototype, named M1, was completed. However, an issue arose as the initial design, featuring a six-cylinder, one-and-a-half-liter boxer engine, proved too lengthy for a comfortable fit. A swift redesign reduced the number of cylinders, resulting in the 1974 debut of the Honda Goldwing. Between 1975 and 1979, Honda achieved significant success in the USA, selling over 97,000 units of the GL1000. In 1976, the Goldwing GL1000 marked the first appearance of this iconic motorcycle in the market. 
The late 80s saw the inception of the six-cylinder Goldwing era, with models ranging from 1.5 to 1.8 liters. Subsequent variants, including cruisers like Valkyrie and Hera F6B, showcased Honda's commitment to innovation. In 1978, Honda paid homage to its racing heritage by introducing the civilian motorcycle CBX, featuring an inline-six engine with an impressive 105 horsepower. While well-received by the specialized Western press, it was the CB900F that excelled in sales during this period. The roots of Honda's love for V4 engines trace back to its racing endeavors. In the late 70s, the company, after leaving the big races, returned to Grand Prix racing and faced the challenge of creating a competitive four-stroke engine. Despite racing rules limiting the number of cylinders to four, Honda ingeniously developed the N500 racing model in 1979, featuring four cylinders, oval pistons, two connecting rods per piston, and eight valves per cylinder. In the 80s, the V4 engine found its place in several civilian models, like VF, VFR, and Magna. Racing motorcycles also adopted this configuration, deviating only briefly when the V5 was reintroduced. The NR750, released in limited quantities in 1992, became the world's most expensive production motorcycle at that time. Honda's foray into cruisers during the 70s challenged the dominance of classic American motorcycles, notably Harley-Davidson. In 1978, Honda took a unique approach with the CX500 and CM185, deviating from the traditional V-twin deuce. Despite a protectionist tariff in 1983, imposed to support Harley-Davidson, Honda's innovation persisted. The V65 Magna, introduced in the same year, stood out as a powerful cruiser, and the company continued to expand its cruiser lineup throughout the 90s and 2000s. Honda's commitment to experimentation is evident in its exploration of rotary engines and turbocharging. In the early 80s, Honda introduced turbocharged motorcycles, such as the CX500 Turbo and CX650 Turbo. While the turbocharging trend faded, Honda's adventurous spirit endured. Turning attention to off-road motorcycles, Honda initially introduced CL models in the early 60s, featuring a scrambler style. The Trail 50 and Z50 became immensely popular in the US during the 60s and 70s, contributing to the rising interest in off-road riding. In 1973, Honda unveiled the CR250M, marking the inception of the CR family of two-stroke motocross motorcycles. Despite Honda's initial aversion to two-stroke engines, competitive pressures led them to embrace this technology. In the 80s, Honda continued to innovate in off-road motorcycles, introducing the CR125MA, CR250M, and CR125MC. The company's CR series showcased a commitment to creating purpose-built off-road motorcycles rather than adapting road bikes for motocross. In summary, Honda's journey through the decades is marked by a relentless pursuit of innovation and a willingness to embrace diverse technologies, ultimately establishing the company as a leader in the global motorcycle industry. Over the next decade or so, dirt bikes ascended to the pinnacle of coolness worldwide, sparking a fierce technological rivalry among Japanese manufacturers. They continually introduced new advancements not just annually but even with every race. The introduction of the Honda CR500 in 1984 marked a culmination of Honda's decades-long motocross racing expertise. It embodied a cross-country machine closely aligned with specialized racing bikes, boasting a formidable two-stroke engine with a 490 cubic centimeters volume and 53 horsepower. While production of the Honda CR500 continued until 2001, the legendary tales surrounding this motorcycle persist to this day. The CR series extended its legacy until 2007, gradually succeeded by the four-stroke CRF family starting in 2002. While the CR and CRF families dominated the motocross and small-capacity segments with the Cabo VSSM engine, the enduro category underwent a shift. In 1972, the Honda XL250 emerged as the first modern four-stroke enduro motorcycle and the initial mass-produced single-cylinder four-cylinder model. This model laid the foundation for the XL family, reaching its pinnacle with the XLR in 1987. The XL family was later succeeded by the NX series, featuring the short-lived NX250. In the early 80s, the Paris-Dakar rally gained popularity, prompting Honda's participation in 1981. Frenchman Cyril Nevu achieved the sixth position in the debut year, securing the first place in 1986. The introduction of the NXR750 in 1986, followed by a 50 cubic centimeters engine upgrade in 1988, resulted in four consecutive victories from 1986 to 1989. 
Honda, however, withdrew from the Dakar for 24 years, returning in 2013. In 1987, the Transalp series was born, marking Honda's foray into the adventure touring enduro class. This series continued to evolve, leading to the introduction of the XL750 in 2023, equipped with an inline-2 engine. The legendary XR250 Enduro model, with over 800,000 units produced, included a version with the moniker Baja, inspired by the famous 1,000-mile race on the California Peninsula. Reflecting on Honda's personality, it's essential to remember that Soichiro Honda was born in 1906, making him an active participant in rockets and ambitious endeavors during the 70s and 80s. Although he retired as the company's president in 1973, he remained involved as a director and later served as the supreme advisor from 1983 until his passing in 1991 at the age of 84. Honda's retirement did not halt his commitment to social activities. In 1980, the Honda Foundation was established, offering financial assistance to talented young engineers. Despite some regrets expressed by Honda for his stern treatment of employees, his legacy as a legend in the motorcycle and auto industry endured. Honda's leadership underwent a transition from founding fathers to competent managers during the 70s and 80s. An agreement between Soichiro Honda and Takeo Fujisawa ensured that their sons were not obligated to join the company. Hiroto Shiho Honda, son of Soichiro Honda, went on to found Gen Motorsports, a tuning company that created original racing cars in the 80s. The period was marked by the rise of Honda as a colossal enterprise with numerous factories, subsidiaries, and dealer centers worldwide. Local managers played a pivotal role in managing the global operations. The 80s also witnessed the flourishing of a well-known class of equipment scooters. While the initial attempts, such as the Juno in 1954, faced challenges, Honda persisted. Mopeds like the Express and the 80s introduction of the Tact, NB50, and the Motocampo, a folding Machic, showcased Honda's creativity. The 80s transitioned to environmentally friendly technology, with Honda shifting most scooters, excluding the 50cc, to four-stroke engines. In 1980, the Elite 125 marked the beginning of the Elite family, which remained prominent for decades. The Dio, introduced in 1988, became legendary for its compactness, reliability, and maneuverability, continuing production to this day. Amid the scooter evolution, the iconic Honda Dio played a pivotal role, earning a legendary status for its compactness, reliability, and maneuverability. In this period, Honda introduced large scooters, including the Elite and Helix models, both featuring a 250 cubic centimeters engine. The 2000s witnessed active competition with other Japanese and Italian scooter manufacturers, leading to a significant expansion of Honda's range, offering various design options. Examples include the retro-style 50 Swiss francs model and the urban-focused Ruckus. In 2005, Honda designers, perhaps inspired by Sori's tank purchase, unveiled the Big Ruckus. In 2002, the Silver Wing, equipped with a 600 cubic centimeters engine, emerged as Honda's most voluminous maxi scooter, previously associated with models CX500 and 650. Responding to the rising interest in volumetric scooters for touring purposes, Honda introduced Adventure Scooters in 2017. The flagship model in this category is the XADV750, featuring the same engine as the NC750. Variants with 350 cubic centimeters and 150 cubic centimeters engines are also available. Shifting focus to other motorcycle classes, the early 80s witnessed the emergence of customized sport bikes. Japanese companies, including Honda, responded to the demand for civilian sports bikes by introducing models incorporating racing technologies. The CBR400, the first model in the CBR line, debuted in 1983. A lesser-known but notable sports model, the MVX250, with a two-stroke V3 engine, preceded it. The NSR250R, featuring a similar power unit, was produced later. The CBR family expanded in 1986 with the addition of the CBR600 and CBR750, along with a sports touring version of the CBR1000F. These motorcycles, except for smaller capacity CBRs, were equipped with four-cylinder inline engines. In the mid-90s, Honda aimed to produce the world's fastest production motorcycle, resulting in the creation of the CBR1100XX Super Blackbird, also known as Drost. This model, named after the State Route 71 aircraft, held the title for three years, achieving a maximum speed of 287 miles per hour in 1996. 
Despite the dominance of the Kawasaki Ninja ZX-11, Honda was not far behind in other motorcycle categories, actively participating in tourism, enduro, cruisers, classic motorcycles, sport tours, and small-capacity segments. By the end of 2019, Honda remained the largest motorcycle company globally, having produced over 400 million units. With a workforce of approximately 220,000 people, Honda continues to invest heavily in research and development. The modern line of motorcycle equipment remains diverse, promptly adapting to the global motorcycle market. As the extensive historical narrative concludes, the success of Honda is attributed to a combination of planned strategies, random events, and the exceptional contributions of key individuals, including Soichiro Honda, Takeo Fujisawa, and many dedicated employees throughout the company's history. In summary, this comprehensive historical overview of Honda motorcycles offers a lively and engaging perspective on the brand's evolution, emphasizing the integral role of innovation, leadership, and hardworking individuals in shaping Honda's remarkable journey in the motorcycle industry. The video concludes with an invitation for constructive feedback and expressions of gratitude for viewership, wrapping up the insightful exploration of Honda's captivating history. I hope hey you liked the video and if so, don't be lazy tobe active, repost subscription is welcome, I don't rule out that in this material contains some errors, you can always point them out constructively and correct them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching Factality.